Welcome to Missoni Art Cross Street and Mark Castelli's second in a series of working portraits of the watermen and the, the, the extraordinary people who are part of the Bay and a part of this world that we live in. Um, there's not much I can say about anything other than turning it over to Mark and letting him walk you through this amazing show. Once again, you're seeing it on a video, but when you see it in person, it's a whole other experience. So come join us. This show only lasts for three weeks, so don't miss it. Twelve new portraits, not as many as I did in the last show, mainly because I spent a hell of a lot more time painting this time, and into smaller and smaller brushes. And so as a result, they're not as many, but you'll see the show is, it has a lot of context for each piece. This painting, uh, it's called Elsewhere. Even though it looks like he's elsewhere, when you look at his eyes, he's actually listening for the oysters and feeling for them through the shaft. He's Lewis Carter, he's 76 years old, grew up on Kent Island. He's been a waterman all of his life. Um, he grew up on Kent Island in the shucking houses all around, literally grew up in, in that environment of the commercial seafood industry. Uh, and it took me a long time to get him to accept the fact that I wanted to be on the boat and get his picture and I wanted to paint him. And I have painted him since 1995, I just never met him personally. He's, uh, I've always seen him on the water oystering and I always took pictures of him and one of my first oystering hand tonger pictures is of him on the Miss Yolanda, which was his older boat. Um, so it was something I had to do. You know, I wanted to meet him in person. I got out with him three times. He got, I can remember, I said, look, I, I can cull oysters for you. And he said, I likes to cull my own oysters. And I said, well, that's fine too. I ended up culling for him um, and talking and listening to stories of him growing up on Kent Island. It was, it was well worth doing. And I hope he comes to the show sometime. He's kind of shy, reticent. He would, he would literally fly from the dock while I'm trying to talk to him. And of, Ultimately, I needed to prove to him how important it was for me to do this. Um, and I was also hooked up with a Maryland Public Television's uh, show about black watermen. And they kept trying to get him to talk and let, them on the, let him on the boat and they wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. It's part of that whole insular culture of watermen. This painting, The Collector, it's a, a, a very close friend of mine. Judge John North from St. Michael's. 30 years ago, I had written a letter asking about where the log canoes are. I had a student who'd seen them on the water, asked me what they were. I gave him a book with an article in it. He says, reach out. I did, Judge North. I, it took me years, but he lets me call him John now. Not everybody gets to call him John. Um, and I wanted to do a portrait of him this year. He's 92 years old. And it was very personal for me to paint this picture. So he's at the helm of his boat, Midnight Lace. He raced a log canoe, which is in one of these paintings here, um, ever since he was in his late teens, early 20s. So he's very knowledgeable. I got to work with him on a book that he wrote about log canoes. He's been very generous with his time, his property. He is a collector. He collects cars, spectacular cars. He collects all manner of things, including people who come on the property and race on his log canoes and his family's canoes and his son's. Um, so it was very important for me to do. This piece is called Stalking. It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek title because when you say catching oysters, most people think that they, you can chase them around and catch them, and they don't move. They just grow in spots. So it's, uh, there was a day where I was oystering with another friend of mine, and we were, we were on the oysters, and we were in the mud. But Wayne looked at me and goes, man, we got them now. We are on the trail. We're, we're getting them. So it's stalking. Um, many of my portraits are just usually one person, hence the portrait aspect of it. Um, of late, I've been starting to use more groups of watermen at work. Oystering can be a very unique, uniquely solo effort, but most of the guys 
don't like to work too close to other people because it's, it's just jams up, it's inconvenient, and you kind of like to find your own place oyster and nobody's watching what you're catching. So this is Buster Alburn headed out in his little boat. He has since passed away many years ago. This show, I have focused on a lot of the older watermen that I first started out with that would first talk to me, and many of them have passed away. I have, I like not to forget them, and this is my way of remembering them and also honoring them for the time that they shared with me. So he's, He's out looking for oysters. He has a sounding pole here that you can feel the bottom and feel if you're on the oysters. And his own very small little boat at sunrise. I spent three days painting water in this. <laughs> Two hours painting that tiny little postage stamp of a face. But the first working portraits show was, was frightening to do. I, I have been painting kind of portraits of watermen but had not really focused on them as a portrait, more of them at work, even though it might have been up close. This is the second such show specifically working towards portraits, and as a result, it's a lot more personal, um, which means it relates to that relationship between each one of these people and myself, more indicative of that relationship than I usually uh, put into my paintings. So this is Johnny Kinnaman. He's 85 years old, um, has been a boat builder for f almost 50 of those years. Uh, this piece here is in their shop because he and his son build boats now. I was crabbing with Johnny two days ago now. Um, he uh, survived a triple bypass. The hardest thing for him wasn't necessarily the healing, it was staying off the water for like six months, drove him crazy. I would go down and visit with him while he was doing his physical therapy and wondering why he's got to do that instead of he could do it on the water. But uh, just a, a really good, solid human being. Got a heart of gold. Seen a lot of good things, seen some, some hard things in his life, but in which they share. This is called On Middle Ground Oystering. I, I had not really noticed before the fact that I do spend a lot of time painting watermen oystering. Their gear, the times of day, the lights, the docks, um, and I'm trying to backtrack now into another, sh into the show coming up at the end of the year where I'm including other things, more fishing, more crabbing. But some of these men I only know through oystering. And this is Curdy Jaquet. He has passed away uh, several years ago and let me on his boat to go oystering on a day when they opened up a bar on the Chester River that was in the fog. I must have shot. I, I got the fog pictures I had waited for for years and I'm still revisiting that day. Um, so that's, uh, this is hand tonging. That's this gear here you can see on this smaller boat here. He, uh, it, I did not get to spend enough time with him that I would like to have. But the fact that when I called him up, I said, I heard that you're going to oyster on this bar in the fog. And he says, yes. And I said, I'd like to get out with you. And he said, come ahead. He used to have a dog named Crab Cake that was very protective of Curdy and his truck and the dock, because I got nipped in the leg one time by him. But, but you walk by the, do the dog in the truck, and he's barking and growling at you. And you just look at him and say, shut up, Crab Cake. And he's like, OK. Okay, so this is a painting of a very well-known waterman in Rock Hall. Scratch Ashley was his name. He had a very, uh, he was very stylish. He had this wonderful Salvador Dali likes mustache. And years ago, I did a painting of him in, in a shirt as nice as this one, button-down collar, and he's hand tonging. And it was called the Well-Dressed Hand Tonger. Um, his kids, I think, may have that painting, um, and internal family politics and whatnot. I think they were supposed to share it, but they didn't. One of them's keeping it. And the sister or, and his, or his daughter, um, she works at the school that my grandchildren go to, so I see her and I've given her paint, uh, photographs of her father, but she wants to come and see this painting. Um, he's a very funny man. Um, Lots of cancers got to him. A lot of cancer seems to be taking many of these watermen. 
um, especially here in Kent County. Um, I think remember there, so you can see the smoking lamp is lit is the title. He's reaching for his cigarettes, but he has been hand tonguing. Um, then it was one of those days where he's out with many of these very same people in these paintings. Um, and I was on another boat and he looked over and I got some very good pictures of him. Technology has changed now where I can have color slides scanned that almost read as well as a good digital file. Um, so this was from a color slide. Uh, and I, I mean, he, he had a way with words. He one time described to me a woman who had a face like a broken suitcase, <laughs> which was just classic scratch. So this is Jack Moore. Um, I met him through a neighbor down the street that I live on here in Chestertown. Um, they were frying perch in this neighbor's backyard. I walked by and I yelled up, Clay, that smells really good. He invites me over. I meet Jack, retired policeman, um, worked on the, had worked on the water for 47 years. The title is 47 and out. He just physically couldn't stand at the rail anymore and do the work. And it bothers him to no end. Uh, and I understand if I don't get out on the water, I get a little edgy. So that is the title of it. And he, this is one of those few that he asked me to do a painting of him to give to his daughter. So there's that interesting confirmation about what I'm doing and, how, and perhaps how well I'm doing it. Um, a digital shot, which I, my wife back in 2007 said, we are running out of room. We can't store color slides anymore. Um, and I said, that's fine. I traded a painting for my first Nikon and uh, have been shooting digitally since. I don't try to replicate the photograph exactly. I get close to that and then I put the photograph away, the print, and I just decide to make a painting out of it. And I come, some mornings I'll come back in the dark and get a big brush and just slap <laughs> big swatches of darks in places that need to be and then turn the light on and invariably it, it, it works. Sometimes I can spend a lot of time on one pace, on one small area, and get it to where I like it and step back and it's lost. It's, it's, it doesn't contribute to the painting. So in this instance, it was these glasses that just caught my eye. And, and there's <clears throat> the tells, I call them. They're anxiety, their anxious, their humor, their wariness, their keen observation. How do you find that in a picture to paint? And those things kind of are, are my overwhelming concern when I paint these portraits. All right, uh, this is a portrait of Biscuit Beck, uh, another well-known waterman in the Rock Hall area. I have worked with his nephews and his son, I think, um, on and off for years. He's culling oysters, he's up to his elbows in mud. He had this wonderful uh, flair for fashion. He always wore these pork pie bebop hats, um, of which he had a variety, some with flames on them that I've painted. And I think this one was like a red leather one at the time. He taught me a lot about culling. And when you cull oysters on the river, you're in fresher water, so mussels grow on the oysters. And this was back when we were allowed to oyster on the Chester River. And uh, as many of the earlier shots are, he'd always hand me these little volleyball sized things of mussels. And it was my job to wring them off or take a hatchet and chop them off. And I don't know how he knew, but usually whenever I got it all cleared off, it was either a rock or it was, it was not an oyster. It was something else in there. And he would just laugh and I'd look at him and say, how do you know? And he goes, years of doing this, but it's a good man. Painting of Willard Marshall, uh, a Smith, they call him Smitty's. He's from Smith Island. I have crabbed with him and oystered with him. His wife, Becky, through her, oh, got 30 years ago, 1995, we moved here from Chestertown. I mean, from uh, Havertown outside Philly. We're renting a farmhouse. There was a painting that I had done of Willie Beck and his father oystering. Willie was getting married. They wanted to give him the painting as a wedding gift, so they passed around the hat, came to the, the farmhouse. Um, it was, it, they had seen the painting as an advertisement that Carla had put in, in the paper. 
and they immediately knew who it was. They wanted to buy the painting as a wedding gift, and uh, I, I wouldn't sell it to them at the gallery price. I said, I'll, I'll give you what I call a waterman's price. And it was a highly substantial reduction. And I said, and it's even framed, and so, which was great. Um, it worked out well. Willie and Roz got married in Las Vegas. I got invited to the reception back in Rock Hall. And at that reception, the painting was there. And I got a lot of phone numbers uh, from Waterman, you know, call, we'll take you out fishing, crabbing, or whatever. Um, Becky is Willard's wife. She gears net. Um, she also works at the college here. So there's this, to me, fascinating dynamic it is an insular group of people. I guess what I'm trying to say is once you've proved that you can be trusted, um, the, the door is open. Some people say, just show up on the dock. You don't have to, tell, you know, have to call ahead. Just uh, call, we'll take you out. And it's been that way for quite a few years now with quite a few people. I've been very lucky that way. So we're just coming back from power dredging for oysters. One summer, I got to go down and spend a long weekend with Willards and his family on Smith Island, which was a total delight, other than the bugs, which I hear is the biggest complaint down there. This is Crash Beck, hand-tonging. Um, I don't know if I ever did any crabbing or fishing with him. I watched him crab from other boats, but I used to get out with him and his sons um, oystering over the years. I don't think he's been oystering this year. If he has, he's been working with somebody else, another waterman that I know. Um, but it's called Heads Up, because if you're culling, this is coming at you. And there's a board underneath here where he's going to dump the oysters to cull. Um, just another one of those watermen from Rock Hall that everybody knows, and I've been very lucky to get out on the water. We have done some things like... Uh, Ghost potting in the upper bay where you go up to dredge for derelict crab pots. Some people think the crabs go in there and die and fish go in there and die. Uh, these guys figure out if the crab's smart enough to go in there, he's smart enough to turn around and come back out, as are the fish. We have found some with fish in them, but they were probably hiding from other fish that wanted to eat them. And it was a group of five boats from Rock Hall that would go all the way up to Hart Miller Island and then drag for these. And one day we're up there and it was rough going up. We had a following wind coming back. We knew we were going to be in the teeth of this thing and it was plenty rough. And I have some great pictures of him and his wife was crew on the boat coming just almost like those pictures of jets breaking the sound barrier where you have that donut of condensation. Well, they're going through these waves and there's just, just water everywhere. It was, a, it was a hell of a day, but I got some great pictures out of it. It's that kind of thing that I get asked to, invite, to, to be on the boat with, to work alongside, and then I get to make some extra money out of it too. This one's called The Captain. This is Eldridge Meredith. He, he was a, a very strong power in the early days of what's called the headboat portion of the commercial fishery. A headboat is... There are a lot of them on Kent Island. It's a kind of a place where a majority of the black fishing captains found that they could keep. It was their place, head boats. And a head boat is different than a charter boat because a head boat, each person is pay, pays the captain his fee. A charter is usually a group that charters a boat and that fee is, is collected and paid as a group. So you get on a boat sometimes with 15, 20 people who don't know each other. Sometimes you get on a boat. I've been on the boat with Tyrone with close to 45, 50 people on the boats. And, some, and they're small groups. And the best part about all of this is they're there to catch fish. They don't really get into politics. They don't get into any of the stuff they left on shore. And it can get quite raucous and funny. Um, I mean, it, it's truly... I, I have enjoyed it to no end. Well, I had been asked by Vince Leggett, who's the chair of the Blacks of the Chesapeake Bay, if I would do a portrait of Eldridge and Tyrone. They had a, a small restaurant and seafood business on Kent Island, Meredith Seafood. And I asked when I got to meet the captain. Um, I wanted to do this painting because that portrait was the opening of the door into that 
that group of watermen that I had never really had any access to. And it, it also made me realize I've been in a kind of a, a specific group of watermen that's not inclusive. It's not, I wanted to be more inclusive as to all of the people that work on the water. And black watermen have been around for many, many, many years, though the numbers are dwindling, which is why I wanted to paint uh, Lewis Carter, uh, the, the first piece we talked about. So I, I got to do the portrait of Tyrone and, and Aldridge standing in front of their business, but this year I just wanted to do, it's like I said earlier, the show's getting more personal. Each show gets more personal, and I wanted to do this painting of Tyrone's father. I was scary about doing that as I was about <clears throat> the one of Judge North because they're such close friends and I know their families well. So I showed Tyrone this painting when it was finished and he goes, yep, that's it. I said, good. This is Junior Heinefeld on his boat Nipper, which he built. He's oystering. It's like I said earlier, there's a lot of oystering pictures in this. And again, it's shot from another boat. But I had also gotten to oyster with him and his son, Freddie. Uh, several times and done several paintings of them over the years. Um, he was, a lot of guys called him what they call a river rat. Some watermen don't like to get off the rivers where they work. They don't like to get out in the bay. They like their home waters. They have their, their if you're a trot liner, it's called a lay. They have the areas where they like to lay their, their line out and most other watermen will respect that. Um, and depending on the day, if you're working a different one, they may go where you had been working or whatnot, but this is one of the paintings that I spent a really large amount of time painting the face. And as light as it is, it's very tiny brush strokes. And as I was working into the photograph and I blew the face up several times, another reason why digital, um, there are distinct advantages to doing that. And I could finally look into his eye and he's looking at me like, what are you looking at? And it was that wariness that, that made the rest of it work. But it wasn't until I could get in there and with the magnifying glass and just put that one point in there where you can see his eye looking at you. And to me, that made the rest of the whole painting, despite his comb over and everything else. <laughs> this is Sonny Benton. Uh, he was, up till recently, the minister on Deal Island. I had gotten to know him when he and his son, who was over there, that's Andrew, they were oystering out of P.T. Hamilton's Bosman down on the Lower Eastern Shore. And um, Sonny had accused me, or not accused me, he had just confused me with another photographer, a young little sharp, shiny person who I don't really particularly like much. And I said, no, I'm not him. And those aren't the words I used, but, <clears throat> I had said to, to Sonny, I'll, I'll bring you something tomorrow uh, so you can remember who I am. And there was a painting that I had done of him and his son oystering, and I brought it down and I left it in the office for him. And the next day I was down there oystering with uh, Tyrone, and Sonny's there and Andrew's there, and Sonny goes, that's, that's one very fine painting. Anytime you want to get out with us, you let me know. And um, I did get out with his son, Andrew, and another waterman that was in last year's show, Tucker Harrison, uh, hand-tonging. But the last season, two oyster seasons ago, I got out with this father and son team together out of Mount Vernon. It was, we, I drove for almost two and a half, three hours to get there. There were so many oysters that season that we only worked 45 minutes, got our limit. I spent more time driving than I did oystering. But in their company, and they go back and forth as fathers and sons do. And it was great because there was no reticence on their part to share whatever they were going to talk about. And he is a card. He has a distinct sense of humor. And I love culling next to him because he's always yelling at me, get another basket. That one ain't full. Move that one over. It was one thing after another. And Andrew's going, can you take it easy on him? I looked at Andrew and said, why? I, you know, I'm having fun. I, I got some really good pictures of these two working on this great big body of water down that way. Beautiful sunrise, lots of other boats around us. It, it was a treat. And Mount Vernon is at the end of a tiny little road, um, very classical uh, waterman's dock, eastern shore. 
um, which again, the scenery, every, everything, it was a great place to go. And that day, he's showing you the oysters that we were catching. They were huge and they were big. And he just, you can see in his face that it is an amazing thing. The name of the painting is The Lord Giveth. Um, and it's, it just, it all works so well between these two. Um, and that's that. Thank you so very much, Mark. You know, these, these exhibits are so much fun for us to put together. They're such a joy to piece it all in the, and, and bring all of this wonderful energy that you've created into a room. But your stories, they are so wonderful for us to hear and for you to share with us. And that's why we do these videos. Uh, thank you, Justinian, for always being here for us. And thank you to all the watermen and their families and everyone who, who makes this world of ours so much richer. Good evening.